Look back over your shoulder fondly and say goodbye to act one of your life. And then quickly look forward. Act two begins today. It's your turn to reach out and take the baton. You enter the world at a time of great challenge. Our country is deeply divided, and too many Americans refuse to hear any opinion that differs from their own. Our planet is warming with devastating consequences, and there's some that even deny it's even happening. Our schools and communities suffer from deep inequality. We fail to guarantee every student the right to a good education. And yet, we are not powerless in the face of these problems. You are not powerless to fix them. No generation has ever had more power than yours, and no generation has a chance to change things faster than yours can. The pace at which progress is possible has accelerated dramatically. Aided by technology, every individual has the tools, potential, and reach to build a better world. That makes this the best time in history to be alive. Whatever you choose to do with your life, wherever your passion takes you, I urge you to take the power you have been given and use it for good. Aspire to live, leave this world better than you found it. I can always see life as clearly as I do today. I learned the greatest challenge of life Knowing when to break with conventional wisdom. Don't just accept the world you inherit today. Don't just accept the status quo. No big challenge has ever been solved and no lasting improvement has ever been achieved unless people dare to try something different. Dare to think different. I was lucky to learn from someone who believed this deeply. Someone who knew that changing the world starts with following a vision, not a path. He was my friend and mentor, Steve Jobs. Steve's vision was that great ideas comes from a restless refusal to accept things as they are. And those principles still guide us at Apple today. We reject the notion that global warming is inevitable. That's why we run Apple on 100% renewable energy. We, thank you. We reject the excuse that getting the most out of technology means trading away your right to privacy. So we choose a different path, collecting as little of your data as possible, being thoughtful and respectful when it's in our care because we know it belongs to you. In every way, at every turn, the question we ask ourselves is not what can we do, but what should we do? Because Steve taught us that's how change happens. And from him, I learned to never be content with the way that things are. I believe this mindset comes naturally to young people. And you should never let go of this restlessness. So today's ceremony isn't just about presenting you with a degree. It's about presenting you with a question. How will you challenge the status quo? How will you push the world forward? 50 years ago today, May 13th, 1968, Robert Kennedy was campaigning in Nebraska and spoke to a group of students who were wrestling with that same question. Those were troubled times too. The U.S. was at war in Vietnam. There was violent unrest in American cities. And the country was still reeling from the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King a month earlier. Kennedy gave his students a call to action. When you look across this country, when you see people's lives go back by discrimination and poverty, when you see injustice and inequality, he 
said you should be the last people to accept things as they are. Let Kennedy's words echo here today. You should be the last people to accept it. Whatever path you've chosen, be it medicine or business, engineering or the humanities, whatever drives your passion, be the last to accept the notion that the world you inherit cannot be improved. Be the last to accept the excuse that says that's just how things are done here. You are uniquely qualified and therefore uniquely responsible to build a better way forward. That won't be easy. It will require great courage. But that courage will not only help you live your life to the fullest, it will empower you to transform the lives of others. Last month, I was in Birmingham to mark the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. And I had the incredible privilege of spending time with women and men who marched and worked alongside him. Many of them were younger at the time than you are now. They told me when they defied their parents and joined the sit-ins and the boycotts, when they faced the police dogs and the fire hoses, they were risking everything they had, becoming foot soldiers for justice without a second thought because they knew that change had to come, because they believed so deeply in the cause of justice, because they knew even all the adversity that they had faced, they had the chance to build something better for the next generation. We can all learn from their example. If you hope to change the world, you must find your fearlessness now, if you're anything like I was on graduation day, maybe you're not feeling so fearless. Maybe you're thinking about the job you hope to get, or wondering where you're going to live or how to repay that student loan. These, I know, are real concerns. I had them too. But don't let those worries stop you from making a difference. Fearlessness means taking the first step even if you don't know where it will take you. It means being driven by a higher purpose rather than by applause. It means knowing that you reveal your character when you stand apart more than when you stand with the crowd. If you step up without fear of failure, if you talk and listen to each other without fear of rejection, if you act, with decency and kindness, even when no one is looking, even if it seems small or inconsequential. Trust me, the rest will fall into place. More importantly, you'll be able to tackle the big things when they come your way. It's in those truly trying moments that the fearless inspire us. Fearless like the students of Parkland, Florida, who refused to be silent about the epidemic of gun violence and rallied millions to their cause. Fearless, like the women who say, me too, and time's up. Women who cast light into dark places and move us to a more just and equal future. Fearless, like those who fight for the rights of immigrants, who understand that our only hope for future is one that embraces all who want to contribute. In 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. gave a speech at Page Auditorium to an overflow crowd. Students who couldn't get a seat listened from outside on the wall. Dr. King warned them that someday we would all have to atone, not only for the words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence and indifference of the good people who sit around and say, wait on time. Martin Luther King stood right here at Duke and said, the time is always right to do right. That time is now.
It will always be now. It's time to add your brick to the path of progress. It's time for all of us to move forward. And it's time for you to lead the way.